Hi all, welcome to Frank Banker Podcast, a knowledge sharing platform for banking, finance and related technologies. This episode we are going to discuss about account aggregators. Amit, let's understand more in detail about account aggregators. So account aggregator uh, in essence is a very simple uh, you know, intervention which has come in, institutionalized intervention which has come in. So they are primarily data intermediaries who are linking data sources to the users of the data. Okay, so that is that is what their primary primary uh, primary role is. Under uh, the regulations, they are identified under the NBFC account aggregator category or NBFC AA category by RBI. RBI has already given I think around thirteen operational licenses. Another three are in principle licenses. Okay. So that's a, that's a, I think a very good intervention to digitize the whole process uh, within the banking and finance space and beyond. Okay. Okay. So Amit, uh, what all the data? can be accessed through this account aggregators and who are the beneficiaries? Uh, so data sources include your bank statements across banks, multiple banks have joined in. Okay. Okay. Then you have your mutual funds data, your shares data, even your GST data is there, your insurance data is there. In nutshell, if I see uh, at a high level, then regulated entities under RBI who are, who are, who are custodians of the data or generating data under SEBI which is the security markets uh, regulator. Then you have the IRDA, which is the insurance regulatory authority, right? Under these data, data sources are getting, you know, uh, consolidated under the data uh, account, the account aggregator framework. Okay. Okay. So the, these are the primary beneficiaries. Of course, the banks are the biggest beneficiaries because they need a lot of data to evaluate borrowers and, and so on. For the consumers themselves, there is a big benefit because right now, if they wanted, let's say a bank facility, they would have to aggregate this data from multiple sources. But today, it can be a very digitized, uh, smooth process okay. under the account aggregator framework. Okay, interesting. So, I mean, uh, since RBI is calling them as NBFCs, mm -hmm. so does it mean that they are in lending business? No, no, no. They are not. Just because they are tagged as NBFC does not mean they are oh, into, okay. into the lending. Because what RBI has done over a period of time is all the non-banking -bank entities, they have done under an umbrella licensing, uh, you know, of NBFCs. Okay. So, these are called NBFCs account aggregator or NBFC AAs. Okay. And they are not into lending business, so the skill required is also not lending. The skill required is primarily being a technology player. Okay. Their I'm ability sure. to build up an IT infrastructure and this IT infrastructure should have the ability to connect, uh, you know, three parties. Uh, the uh, sources where the data is there, uh, the consumers whose data is there on those sources and the users of the data, for example, the banks or the financial institutions, what we call as financial information users. So that is the that is the paradigm within which uh, they play. So primarily technology ability is what we are looking at in, in an NBFC AA. Okay. So Amit, uh, this means uh, aggregator uh, provide a single window uh, with many data inputs required for the bankers to assess the borrower? Yeah, so in lending business, uh, this solves a big problem. Okay. Because instead of you know getting the data from multiple sources, you have a single window from which the data can be uh, you know uh, that data can be sourced, right? And there is a, a sanctity of the data which is coming in because it's an institutionalized mechanism. Mecha mechanism. Uh, and this is done uh, not randomly but based on the consent of the consumer itself. Okay. So if a borrower is applying for a loan, they consent the account aggregator to source this data from multiple sources and provide to the provide to the bank. Now that's that's on the operation side of it. What it does is, Bala, it makes the process of assessing the borrower itself very smooth. Okay. Okay. So for example, if you have surrogate lending products like GST based lending or bank balance based lending, you can fully automate that process today. Because from multiple bank sources, you can get that data of account statement and do or from the GST portal, you can get the data and you can do the do the assessment. Similarly, if you are doing lending against some of the financial assets like uh, mutual funds or against securities or against uh, insurance policies, again you can have a lot of lot of lot of auto automation. So this is going to change the way banks function on some of the products. It makes it more efficient. Also, a bit challenging for the bankers possibly. Okay, sounds good. So for bankers, this seems to be a double-edged sword. Then for bankers, yes. For banks, as I said, it brings in efficiency, right? So, uh, if your job role as a banker entails, you know, collecting this data, digitizing this data, you know, comparing or reconciling this data, right? That is getting automated because the you you are getting the data from the source of truth, 
okay, in that sense in, in the account, account aggregator framework. So, you do not have a document coming in or a file coming in which you have to you know revet for uh, for your assessment purposes. So, the skill sets required for this particular you know in this particular paradigm would be slightly different. Similarly, in operations if you are doing a documentation check in operations or verification of documentation right that also would possibly would need to be you know uh, looked at re looked at. So, it brings in process efficiency as I said earlier to the banks, but it also means the job profiles which are there would undergo some bit of a skill set change. Okay, okay. That's the answer. So, Avid, uh, I am worried about the bankers. Okay, let us keep that aside. Okay, please explain me about this consent management. Let's see, consent management in account aggreg aggregation, account aggregator framework is very simple. That means whenever, uh, whenever you have you know data to be moved from the data source to the user of the data, the uh, owner of the data, which is the consumer whose data is being moved, has to give a permission to the account aggregator. Okay, and when they are giving the permission, they have would have a clarity. They should have a clarity of what information is being shared, what are the items of the information which are being shared, for how long this information is being given by whom this has been requested. So, this clarity and transparency should be there in the in the consent management. And then customer should have a right to recall this consent also, right. I might have consented to share some data with you, but I, I should have a right you know to withdraw that uh, withdraw that consent uh, also. And as the framework matures over a period of time, my expectation is that uh, uh, it will provide more control to the consumers to you know tweak what subsets of information. So, for example, today if you give a consent for banks, bank statement access, the entire bank statement access is going, but tomorrow I may want just the average bank balance information to go to the bank, right. Okay. Just a hypothet hypothetical use case. So, I should have those controls, controls available. So, I think the maturity of the account aggregator would be to get into those small nuances and controls which will be provided to the consumer what information for what period the information what subset of information is being is being shared so that's the that's the paradigm for the consent uh, management piece okay so amit are there models similar models across the globe oh yes of course the whole uh, uh, open banking piece okay is primarily around this right so in open banking what we are saying banks are supposed to provide apis to the to 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 non banking entities right so what we are saying the data data sharing should uh, should happen in some way in, uh, in in UK, you have open banking norms and account service information provider norms. In uh, Europe, you have uh, pretty pioneering work under the, the PSD2 or the Payment Service Directives, Directives 2, right, which envisaged account service providers, thereby mandating banks to, pro, you know, provide information pertaining to a, con, uh, to, to a consumer based on the consumer's consent to these account service, uh, account service provider. So that is there. In Australia, in Singapore, you have these uh, these 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 norms, and you know, of course, the flavors change a little bit, all right. A lot of the focus is on the information which is there with uh, with banking intermediaries, right? Uh, but in India, I think the the coverage in terms of the databases is slightly uh, slightly wider, okay. And I think this width will only increase over a, over a period of time. Kamit, what is the revenue model of uh, this banking uh, uh, account aggregators? Uh, so. Primary business model is they charge from the from the uh, user of the of the of the service. In which case it will be the financial institution. So okay. let's say if I am assessing a borrower and I am I want that information, so I would possibly pay for per call basis like we have in API. No, oh, okay, right. So that could be that could be one uh, one model, right? What I am worried about it uh, whether the account aggregators would also be able to charge some money from the consumers themselves. Okay. Because yes, there is a convenience element over here, but uh, my thought or the school of thought that I belong to is that if the data belongs to the consumer and if you are creating an institutional mechanism to move that data, right, then you cannot charge me for my own data. Okay. Right? okay. Because that's, that uh, you are creating a moat like an account aggregator. Uh, uh, aggregator. Right. And that is a disconnect that I have had with even the bureau system, but I think that is for the next episode. Coming back to our discussion, impact on bankers and what bankers exactly should do? Okay, so see all these interventions and it is not limited to only account aggregators, all the intervention and technology development which are happening are changing the way banks would have, you know, would set up their operations processes. Uh, 
and uh, in case of account aggregators again as i said earlier right if you are only in terms in if your job role is primarily as a banker job role is primarily to look at these different data points and you know consolidate them digitize them and reconcile them then because the data is coming through an authentic channel that that is no longer a necessity and in a digi digitized form right that's no longer a necessity now if i talk about uh, uh, credit risk for example credit risk managers would need to therefore hone their skill more towards qualitative assessment okay because whatever can be achieved through quantitative assessment will get automated okay. and it is happening already a lot of parameterization and parameter scorecards are already there but as we go along as the data becomes more more robust right you will you will uh, be required to put your skills to understand what is happening you know at the qualitative aspects of the of, of a particular borrower and that's that's easier said than done so your ability to look at the softer aspects okay is what what is essential judgmental lending so to say right that's one uh, similarly the skill that you have in terms of you know uh, selling products which are very off the shelf okay would need to be really looked at it so again how do you pitch to the clients and what are what are the what are the products that you will pitch to the client that product suite possibly would undergo need to undergo change okay, okay. then on the operation side bankers who are on the operation side there also they need to look at it because as i said there is a lot of lot of changes which are happening we have talked about robot robotic process automation earlier right which is changing the back offices yeah, yeah, quite quite a bit so their life is also also changing but in that space i would say there are some areas which are still a little away from the full or complete digitization so for example your trade finance and some document movement is still there uh, your security creation let's say your land record verification so these areas are still not fully digitized and they are still some time away from uh, from full digitization but the way for example initiatives on blockchain are happening okay the way ai is working out i think that is also set for a change so so banker has to look at what is the value add that they bring beyond the mundane routine repetitive task uh, which are which are there yeah so they 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 should be ready for the for the new age banking and they should start preparing for it sounds good okay. so viewers i am sure you would all got the wonderful insights on account aggregators please do subscribe like comment and share thank you all